welcome back to another episode of Mark Royal Media's Dance Showcase, where it is all about dance. I'm your host, Crystal Williams, and today I'm at Be Creative Art Center in Atlanta, Georgia, to take part of ATL Crank and A Taste of Yeek with Gary Watson. But of course, that's not all. We'll also be covering the production Universal Remote, presented by Dare Aerial Dance Company. But first, while I head in to take this class for Taste of Yeek, we're going to take you to New York City to showcase tap dancer Justin Bochito. Hey, what's up, everyone? You already know who I am. I am your girl, Asia Diamond, the host for the Mark Media Dance Showcase, where it's all about the dance. And today we are at Pearl Studios. Yes, we are still in New York, and we have... Justin Bocito, an amazing tap dancer originally from New Jersey, but currently living in New York. Stay tuned. Hey, we are here now with Justin Bocito. Don't you just love how the last name just flows off my tongue? Justin Bocito. I love it. How are you? Good. How are you? I am good. Thank you for being with us today. I really appreciate it. So you are a tap dancer, right? right. Mm-hmm. Do you do any other f- styles of dancing? Uh, theater dance. Musical theater is definitely my... Um, my playground. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tap, is your- tap is what I, I learned to do um, when I was really young, mm-hmm. and it's what I it's what I teach here a lot in New York. Mm-hmm. And um, there's some amazing tap people here, and I but I find it throughout the rest of the country mm-hmm. and the rest of the world, you know, tap is it's sort of a strange art form. It's just starting to come back, but it's um, for a while there. I think that people thought tap was just a special skill mm-hmm. and no longer a dance style. Right. And even in the reality TV shows that we've seen, um, tap just really wasn't focused. And finally, I think it was just this this year that yeah. a tap dancer won. She so won. she won. Yeah. I know. So that's really great. It's uh, I'm hoping that will continue to to grow tap dancing again in yeah. the country. Yeah. Well, congratulations to the, all the tap dancers for your win on So You Think You Can Dance this year. You had a tap dancer to win. Oh my God, I was so happy when she won. Yeah. I can't remember her name right now, but she won. Starts with a G though, yeah. right? It's all right. Don't worry about it. So you currently are a tap dancer. Have you worked on any projects that you'd love to tell us about? Um, Well, I'm working on a project right now that I'm really excited about, and it's called Pre-Show. And it's uh, a project that I'm collaborating on with my wife, actually. And her concept was to create an hour-long show that was for... Um, the patrons of the theater who are going to see a Broadway show that night. So you'd come and see our show at 6.30, and you would be entertained, have some dinner, and then go to your show. And the, the content of pre-show is uh, three tap dancers who all grew up, new, grew up in New Jersey, which is where I'm from, and uh, we kind of tell the story of all the tap dancers who inspired us. So we've been taking... Um, Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, George M. Cohan numbers, the people who really were very prevalent in our lives, and we've been um, sort of recreating them, choreographing our own versions of them, and we've created this little hour-long show about our life and our journey with TAP. So, so is your wife a dancer? Uh, she is a dancer, yeah, oh, she is. Oh, uh, she, she, well, she's, she's, she is an amazing, uh, an amazing performer herself, and she was doing that for quite some time, musical theater and film, and then um, she just recently got into uh, sort of the other side of the table, and she works for a company called Ju Jampson, which is one of the big uh, Broadway theater owners, and so she's kind of moving into creative consulting, and ultimately, I think, wants to do some some producing of her own, oh, so this is a nice cool. little first project for, okay. for her and for us to work on together. Right. So where can they find more information about the Yep, you can just go to, uh, really, Facebook's the best place to go and just search pre-show, and that's where all the information is about the project. Okay, and when does the show... Like, uh, we, have, show? We, have, uh, we have another performance happening on November 20th okay. here in New York at the Lori Beachman Theater. Okay. And so we're just trying to find the right home. Mm-hmm. We have to find a place that has food mm-hmm. and drinks that can kind of work along with what we're trying to do, right. and that's, that's key. And um, so the, the Beachman is just another stop for us to see if, if we can sort of collaborate with them okay so make sure i go to facebook search pre-show the next show is november 20th in new york again facebook pre-show november 20th facebook new york got it justin bolsito oh my god i just love your last name all right so you currently teach as well right where do you teach at right now um yeah sorry right now i teach at broadway dance center okay and what days I teach on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I teach beginner and basic, and that's at 12 noon. And then on uh, Saturdays, I teach theater dance at 6 and advanced beginner tap at 7.30. And then I also teach on Friday nights, 7.30 tap. 
and Sunday. Well, you teach a yeah, I teach a lot. <laughs> and then Sunday afternoons, I teach a 4.30 advanced beginner theater dance class. So now you have the basic and the beginner class, which is two different classes. Like, So what is the difference between the basic and the beginner class? Because yeah. it sounds like they're the same, but then it's really not. Yeah, well, it's always tricky. I think when you're taking open classes at any dance studio, especially here in New York, um, yeah, it's kind of based on the teacher, what mm -hmm. the level is that they want to, to teach at. Mm -hmm. But I would say that basic is for people who've maybe tried tap once or twice mm -hmm. and um, maybe just got frustrated or didn't have the time for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it definitely focuses more on the elementary steps and ideas of tap dancing. Um, and then we try to put those things together to make combinations and exercises across the floor. Beginner is definitely for people who've kind of been doing it maybe for a year or so and wants, want to move up to the next level. I, th I feel like the beginner level for me is a bridge from basic to advanced beginner. It really is the, a bridge. It, 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 it pushes people. Um, it's a good challenge for those who are looking to be challenged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I always could never get the flap. I can get the shuffle. Yes. But I can uh, never get the flap. See? Mm -hmm. And then I have no, for me to be a dancer, I have no rhythm. And with tap, you need rhythm. You do. You need rhythm. Let everybody know where they can find you on Facebook, social media, anything. Like if they want to ever get in contact sure. with you, let them know. Okay. Um, I have a website. It's justinbasito.com. And I'm on Facebook. I have a page for my dance classes on Facebook. You can also go to broadwaydancecenter.com. Um, BDC is a great place to study. It's, um, it's a very competitive dance studio. But I really treat my classes... Um, uh, I, I want everyone to feel like they can come to the studio and dance. So even if you're just a, a hobbyist when it comes to dance, uh, I really welcome you to come and study with me. And um, those are really the two best places is Facebook and then my website, justinbasito.com. So justinbasito.com. His Facebook. No, did you say Facebook? I did, yeah. You did. So he has website, Facebook, and make sure y'all go to Facebook and search pre-show New York, November 20th. And there you have it with Justin Bosito.
All right, we're now joined with Gary Watson. Yes. And I have to say that I just took this crank dancing class and it was fantastic. It was high energy, it was intense, it was moving, my arms was doing stuff, my legs was doing stuff, my feet was switching patterns, directions. It was fantastic. So thank you so much for that class. Thank you, thank you. So I wanted to ask you a little bit about your background with crank dancing. How did you get started in this? Oh man, I started almost 30 years ago, believe it or not. Um, I was a teenager and uh, it came from the skating scene way back in the 80s and people just evolved from the skate floor to the dance floor and it just kept going. That's fantastic. I can I can imagine how phenomenal it is seeing it skating and I can imagine how phenomenal you look skating too while doing that. I can't skate a lick. <laughs> but if you've seen the movie ATL, yes. it, that's how the skating routines were and it just kept going from there. Excellent. So how long have you been teaching crank dancing? Oh, man. I just actually started in April, but I've been teaching hip hop for about 12 years. Awesome. Okay, that brings me to my next question of what other styles of dance that you specialize in. So hip hop is one of them. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I did hip hop for 12 years. Then I decided to do what I came in the game doing, which is ATL crank. Right. So tell us a little bit about A Taste of Yeek, ATL Crank, this facility that we're in, Be Creative. Yes. Tell us a little bit how it came to be. Well, um, a couple of friends of mine, Treon Kent and um, David Kent, they uh, started Be Creative Art Center, and um, they asked me to teach. And I said, if I teach, I'm going to do the original ATL Crank, because I see a lot of people doing it, but they're young and they don't know the basic moves of it. And you know, it's a lot of moves, it's names for the moves. So I felt like being an OG, I need to come in and be like, look, this is how it goes. And we can mix it all together and you know, roll with it. Yes, that's fantastic. And that's what makes Atlanta so rich in culture is that it shouldn't be diluted. It should be the original, however it was enacted is what it should be. So. That's what's up. All right. So tell us a little bit about events that you have coming up and some classes that our audience can uh, come to. Okay. Um, I do my classes um, Wednesday and Thursday at 8 o'clock here at Be Creative Art Center, Atlanta Industrial Parkway. All right. You heard it here. All the events. I think there's one tonight. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be live, but there's one tonight. It's a meet and greet because everybody wants to get together, haven't seen each other in 20 years, mm -hmm. old battles that they didn't, you know, stuff. People want to get, they, they you know, their right. aggression <laughs> off. So it's going down tonight at the ice bar. Right. Excellent. So that's something that you do, maybe hopefully when our viewers are watching this, it goes successfully and we'll have it again. There will be more events. There, there's been talk. We're, we're trying to do a documentary and all types of stuff. So, Fantastic. yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much, Gary. Everyone, definitely come and attend a crank dancing class. Come learn it here in the original integrity. All right. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Now, check out our coverage of Universal Remote by Dare Aerial Dance Company. You're watching Mark Rose Media's Dance Showcase, where it's all about the dance. I'm your host, Diamond Jack, and today we're covering the Dare Area Dance Company and their production, Universal Remote. And now we're joined by Nicole Mermans and Farida Aleem, members of the Dare Area Dance Company. Ladies, how are you doing? We're great. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Okay, tell the audience, how did you get involved with dance? Um, I started dance when I was real little, but just tap ballet and jazz classes. And I always loved dance, um, but never pursued it professionally. Um, but when I was in college, I took continuing ed classes out of the dance department. And that's when I found aerial dance. There was an instructor who was teaching um, modern dance and low flying trapeze. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I was introduced to it and I just kind of went with it from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, you. and I just woke up one day and was like, I love to dance and <laughs> I think I want to do this professionally. <laughs> so I literally just um, started going and taking dance classes and 
um, I was performing with various freelance companies and artists uh, locally and abroad. I performed all, uh, all over the world. And locally, um, I performed with a local dance troupe that is a common thread between Nicole and I, um, another member of the company, danced with me and Nicole saw me performing with her. Uh, that's Beth Del Nero. She's also a company member. Um, she and I performed with a local dance company and Nicole saw me and she was like, I think you could do this. And she taught me aerial dance and I was introduced to it about three years ago and caught the bug and been hooked ever since and found my twin. Yes. Cause that's another thing you may not know. We're we're actually twins. We found each other. We were separated. Yes. Oh, that's <laughs> amazing. That is amazing. And like I do understand. I have a strong passion for dance as well. So I can definitely relate. Now tell me more about your production. Universal Remote. Yes. Universal Remote. I love that name. Please tell me more, Nicole. Sure. So um Universal Remote is an expansion on a piece that we did last year um we did like a 30 minute segment for a collaborative show last year that we um actually took a really light-hearted approach to examining issues of control mm -hmm. and a big remote control is a central like prop that we use in the show but um and it was a show that we did with dare and one member of jungle boogie crew um, and we had great success with it, loved working with them, um, and decided that we wanted to expand on it and build a full production around it. And so after that, um, we came together and, and just started brainstorming and we expanded on it and expanded the storyline. So the underlying, um, we always delve deep with our shows on one level, but then, you know, but we tell the story on, in a very lighthearted way. And so we, we kept that, the issues of control, kind of as our um, underlining theme, but then we built this whole story about um, that we, that there was a crash landing of some humanoids um, mm -hmm. that came from out of space, and they landed in a, a, a like the urban, outskirts, outskirts of an urban setting, and um, it, it really became also this whole, the story developed into, um, you know, just peop different people or like, really learning how to come together and 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 we really celebrated our differences and learned how to communicate. So originally, like when they first land, the, hum the humans on earth are scared of them and are just assuming that they're, you know, there to um, attack them and, um, but that's not the truth. And so we learn how to communicate and learn, you know, we come up with common language and, and actually, you know, come together. We celebrate our differences, and yes, yeah, it's, it's a sweet story. <laughs> yeah, I love it, Perita. Who's involved in Universal Remote? We all are actually. Um, the production is very collaborative. Um, we all have input into how the story evolved. So, um, between the company members, and then even with incorporating Jungle Boogie, um, they had their insight on how to turn the urban city scene and and give that extra umph to you know what are you doing or, or you know their their break dancing is so vibrant and expressive that it really added that extra thing that we needed to to show the different aspects and really bring those scenes out because you know when you're you're working in a setting that doesn't have a million dollar billion dollar set you have to make the audience feel what you want them to see. So Jungle Boogie has a very strong um, feeling behind what you see when they're dancing and you really feel in, in, involved in what they do. As with, with Dare, we try to really have a strong sense of you're connecting with what's going on. It's not just, wow, that's amazing. The dancing is amazing, but what is it trying to tell you? Where are you going? with it and all of the collaborative um, efforts with everybody involved from Jungle Boogie to Dare Company to even the junior members, you know, they, they definitely added extra layers to the story, which helps make a great story. 
it's not coming from one person's perspective, but from everyone's perspective. The, the original um, segment that we produced last year was um, called Locus of Control. Mm -hmm. And then when we expanded it, we decided on Universal Remote because it was like outer space, the universe, remote control. You just kind of, oh, it's a universal remote. Uh, the play on the idea that you can have uh, one mindset or one control that can go o all over. It can go, there are no bounds to where you can have that kind of control and that kind of acceptance because you want to be able to leave yourself open to the possibilities of releasing control to something that you don't know. Yes, I'm so engaged with your passion behind your production. <laughs> like, I am ready to sign up. So for our audience, where would you, well, what do you suggest for them to do if they're interested in taking classes or where, where can they get more information about the classes that, if they want to take it? Sure. So um, you can always go to our website and the one um, dareproject.org and dare is spelled D-A-I-R mm -hmm. project.org. That's our um, that's our studio side of uh, is our website with all the studio information. So we have the class listings there. You can also go to our Facebook page. It's dare to dare and it's D-A-I-R-T-O-D-A-R-E. And we update that regularly with with both performances and classes um and then we have our company page was which is darecompany.com d-a-i-r but we have tons of classes for you to over here she teaches the aerial fitness and it's um it can be taken you don't have to have any kind of experience um and it can be taken as a drop-in and it's offered right now every wednesday evening at eight o'clock and Friday morning at 930 but we're going to be adding more times starting January we'll also have a Monday evening class at eight o'clock and then we have our technique classes um, and the difference is our technique classes they um, you build on on the technique and start sequencing and eventually do choreography so it's a little it's more dance based um, and that is on um, Monday Wednesday, and we'll be adding Thursday classes at 7. Okay. Okay. Also, I wanted to touch on the fact that, you know, DARE is a nonprofit organization, and we really are very passionate about teaching the kids and, and serving underprivileged um, youth that may not have access to um, this type of, you know, athletic ability. Um, and, and those who may not even be able to afford to take classes, we really... Um, pride ourselves on trying to reach those um, kids that wouldn't normally have access to this type of learning. And um, so we teach kids um, from first grade to teens all the way up until graduating. And um, the adult classes really help um, that part of the program thrive. And it's, it's so rewarding to see these babies get up there and just go for it and from the time that they're children and then the time that they transition into the the teen program it's so great to see how far they grow not just physically and with their ability but with learning how to relate to each other and how to help one another and how to and it's a really great skill to to help a child grow physically and mentally so that's one of our pride and joys yeah. about what we do here at Dare, um, and and the ke and the teen productions. If you think our productions are great, you should definitely come check out the kids because they're really doing it. As you can see with our junior members, yeah. who both have been in the in the in the program since they were very small and young, and um, to see them blossom into the professionals that they really are right now is just a testament to what we're doing here at DARE in the program. Wow. You ladies seem to be a positive role models to our youth. Please follow them, check out their website, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. These ladies are amazing, and I'm so happy I'm here to interview you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now, check out some of the highlights from the production Universal Remote by Dare Aerial Dance Company, featuring Jungle Boogie. <laughs>
hope you enjoyed our show today. Be sure to log on to mrmdanshowcase.com for more info, updates, and events. And make sure to follow us at Mark Rule Media. I'm your host, Crystal Williams. You can follow me at Crystal Williams. Be sure to tune in next week. Showcase, Dan Showcase.